Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to Restoration From Within. I'm super excited to be here on this Truth Telling Thursday. Usually I come up here, um, not live, but I come up here on Thursdays and share a truth. Um, a truth that sometimes we might be trying to escape or a truth that is a, re a revelation from the Word of God. So I'm super excited to be here. I'm totally being obedient. Hey, Cynthia, how you doing? Thank you for joining me. I love you. So um, uh, those of you who don't know me or who I have not had the pleasure to meet you, nice to meet you. My name is Kat Pons. I am the restoration coach here at Restoration From Within. I help kingdom-minded women go back to an overall healthy place, and I do that via biblical principles, accountability, education, and health-conscious products and services. And usually on Thursdays, I come up here and I, and I share a truth, right? And a truth is either the rev something that is re revealed through the Word of God, which is the truth, and it sets us free. Or it's a truth that sometimes we don't want to face, but we have to come face to face with it to, in order to walk into our restoration from within, right? So this past week, God has been dealing with me about... I love you too, Cynthia. Kisses, kisses, kisses. Um, and those of you who are catching the replay, please, by all means, please put hashtag replay so I can properly thank you and greet you. And if this is your first time watching Restoration From Within, um, this is our Truth Telling Thursday's version. Please let me know that this is your first time by uh, placing hashtag first time so I can properly greet you as well. So, okay. So this past week, God has been dealing with me about uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, right? And he has really wanted me to go um, into um, more of an in-depth study with it. Um, and that's what I have. I've done that also with my two girls in our homeschool journey. So I was like, okay, God, you're just really going to, you know, we're going to go over it. We're going to dissect some words. We're going to study them and we're going to see how we can apply it to our lives, right? So little did I know, you know, that such a familiar verse or familiar verses would be more in tune, especially in this season that's going on with all the, um, with all the, uh, what the world considers to be chaos, you know, and, and, and some worries and concerns that we truly do have in this season. And how can we really apply this word that God has given us in Philippians 4, 6, and 7? So um, without, before I continue, I want to uh, write the, well, give you the, the, the Bible verse that I'm studying, that we've been studying this past week. And every day, God has given me something to share with you, Chicas. And, um, you know, um, there's a Bible verse, and I believe it's in Psalms, where it says that um, uh, in order, it, as you are a water host and water others, you know, you're getting watered yourself. So that has been my experience this past week. And trust me when I tell you, I have seen this uh, being applied in my life and also um, seen it even in my connections with other like-minded chicas as well. Hey, Latasha. Hey, Jonathan. How you doing? Thank you so much, Cynthia. So um, I'm going over the Bible verse that God gave me this week, right? And so the one um, is I'm reading from the web version. And I'm also going to touch on the amplified version as well. And it's Philippians four six through seven and it says in nothing be anxious but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god that is verse six right and so then um in this verse right here in nothing be anxious but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god that verse in itself right there the, what i received out of that the revelation one of the mysteries um, uh, that I received was, is that, um, that was to me was a, um, an instruction that God was giving us an instruction, what to do in the midst of, of when we're faced with, um, with being anxious. Right. And so then the promise came behind. If you do this, if you follow these instructions, this is what I'm going to do for you. So in the verse seven is a promise to me. And again, I am no scholar. I am walking in my journey into getting to know and study the word of God. So if you receive the a revelation, um, let's combine it all together so that we can feast on this word as well. So in verse seven, I believe, I truly personally believe it was a promise that God has given me. If I follow these instructions on verse six, so um, verse seven, the precept is telling me 
um, before it that this is my promise. So this precept is telling me that because I followed those instructions that he will give me and the peace of God, not my peace, not your peace, not what the world calls peace, but the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and thoughts in Christ Jesus, right? Okay, so I'm getting somewhere with this. So um, this is what I did. So in order for me to understand what was, um, what, what is it that I'm up here to tell you and share with you and give you a revelation or even confirm what you have been, um, what you have felt even reading through this Bible or studying these verses is I had to go and dissect anxious, right? So anxious, when I looked it up in the dictionary, the girls and I, um, it's an adjective. So an adjective is a word that describes an animal, a person, a thing, or a thought, right? So it's a description, an adjective, right? So, um, and so one of the definition for it was, uh, being worried, being concerned, afraid, nervous, um, being eager. And so I was like, okay, let's go a little bit deeper with eager, right? So eager in this term, when it's attached to, um, anxiousness is ready and impatient to do something you caught that ready and impatient to do something so i i'm even going to go further um because you know i'm i'm really i'm passionate about health so i told the girls okay so what are some things that you're feeling hey bonnie how you doing so what are some things that you're feeling and so when you are anxious and and that's what we're you know going over and those who just joined us welcome we're going over philippians four um six through seven and what today is truth telling thursday and so we're dissecting the word but we're going to get to the truth of it of this right so anxious um what what it the, what it makes you feel i want you guys to put me how do you feel when you're anxious how do you feel when you're anxious so these are some things that we came up with you know we're feel we feel uptight we feel um we got the bgs anybody who know what the bgs stands for the bubble guts right you get the bubble guts hey Therese hey fam how you doing um you uh it's you're diff you know you can't concentrate because you're so distracted focus on you know whatever is bringing you anxiety right you are unsettled thank you Latasha um you um sometimes you feel like uh you're hyperventilating right you your your breathing becomes more rapid um, let me see what else. Uh, what we have, we have nausea. You you come you come sick to your stomach. Sometimes you have the sense of urgency that you um, have to uh, urinate, right? And so and sometimes it comes to the point that you might because you get so anxious, you might feel that you, you know, or you might urinate on yourself, right? We talked about all these. So now we talked about that. You know, anxious means um, uh, me means being worried, being nervous. Uh, being uh, uh, concerned about something. And then now we're talking about the effects of that on your physical body, right? So then after that, what, what we discovered was that, you know, this, this cannot be of God because this is not what God wants of us, right? And so I was like, okay, so we broke that down. So at the end of the day, there was one word that I have not mentioned that, and you can Google it yourselves, y'all. And one of the words, a synonym for an anxious or anxiety or anxiousness is being afraid being afraid so the number one point of truth telling thursday today is that anxiety is rooted in fear anxiety is rooted in fear and um and god told us in his word right in his word that fear is not of him that spirit is not of him right and so i know that in this season we don't know what's going on. We don't know what the future holds, right? And we do, and and there's a lot of things we you know we're anxious about even if we touch something. You know we're concerned. We're worried. We're um we're anxious about um you know how we're gonna pay our bills or how how are we you know I'm in this house too long. You know the the term of eager. I'm ready and impatient to do something, right? I'm I'm all this. So, okay, so, but is, is that of God? Is that of God? How can I apply this word? Make it tangible to me right now. So the first thing, in order for you to apply God's word, in order for you to find a solution to a problem, you have to find the root of the problem. And one of the roots of the problem is fear. We have to understand that when we feel anxious, it comes through the, the real root of it. It's fear. So we have to attack fear. And how do we attack fear? 
by speaking the word of God, by understanding what is it that we're fearful. Now we go into the to, to digging and up trying to uproot that situation. Is this easy? Heck no, it ain't easy. But no, God said it would not, God never said life would be easy. He never said that. But what he did say and guarantee 100%, whenever you see surely in the Bible or whenever you see his word, it's a promise because we're not even a number seven yet, y'all. So, He's telling, he's telling you, and nothing be anxious. Don't be fearful. Try, you know, no, don't be fearful. It's that because when you focus on the problem, whatever you focus on grows. So whatever you focus on grows. So if you're focusing on fear, then you're feeding fear. So God is telling us here, and this is and this is the truth. This is the remedy, the solution, the 100% guarantee that if I try to do this as much as possible, that God is going to he I mean, he's faithful, y'all. He is faithful because if you have a roof over your head, if you look, I'm not even going to talk about what you have and what you don't have, but if you woke up this morning and you feel the pulse you feel that pulse. You could touch it around your neck. You could touch it on your wrist. You feel that pulse? That's another day and another opportunity that you are above ground and that you can walk into your purpose and destiny. Period. 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 Yes. Yes, Victoria. He is faithful. Yes, he is. So it says, and nothing be anxious. So it's rooted in fear. So we address that fear. We confront that fear. We tell the fear the truth, right? And that's that's where um, God is telling us here what's the most important thing is here is that now we know that fear, it starts where? It starts in the mind. That's why we have to renew our minds. So then God is saying, and nothing be anxious. Okay, God, okay, you're telling me not to worry, not to be concerned. So what, what am I supposed to do then? What am I supposed to do? It's in my face. I'm looking at what's the situation. What am I supposed to do? He's saying in everything. And the word everything here means entire, all things that you do. You do three things. You pray, you petition, and you give thanksgiving. You pray, you petition, and you give thanksgiving. Okay, so let's break those things down. These are the three things on how you overcome anxiety. And by all means, I am not a medical professional. I'm not saying that, you know, what you're going through, um, it is not a physical, because we talked about the physical and the mental um, um, challenges that you're faced when you are anxious. I'm not saying that you don't marry the great physician with your physician and seek help. I'm not, I'm a big advocate for um, seeking therapy, right? However, we need to marry the great physician, which is God with your physician. And these are some things that you can do alongside those things. If you need, you know, if you need further assistance, right? If you, if you need help to the point that you are feel that you're, you know, that, that your mental health is at stake, by all means, seek that help. However, marry the great physician's hands with your physician and then come together. And these are some things that you can attach the practical side of things with the supernatural side of things. And then now you have the super in your natural and the forces combined are most powerful and guaranteed to bring you victory in this area. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. Hey, Dolores, how you doing? Okay. So how do you overcome anxiety? By prayer, talking to God. You know, um, and so I asked the girls, okay, so when we're talking to God, you know, um, that is showing um, we're, we're actually applying our faith. We're applying our faith because we're having a conversation with God, right? So, and they said a strong hope. That's what faith is, is a strong hope. So we're applying, we're talking to the source, not to everybody else, not to, um, to, uh, to Sister Quanisha or, or, you know, Kiki, you know, not, none of that. We're not talking to nobody else. We're talking to the creator who has the blueprint to our answer. He created us. So he knows exactly what we're going through. He know, He knew, he put, he started us from the ends and worked all the way back from the beginning and created us and made us. And then he brought us into earth, right? So he knows exactly everything that we're going to. He's waiting for us to commune with him, have that kind of near, right? So um, Latasha says some things to do to overcome anxiety pray petition and give thanksgiving yes okay so um thank you so much so so we're praying right we're asking we communing with god we talk all the time it's not like oh thou god up in heaven nah man be real with him listen i'm about to look you got to remind me right now that prison orange is not my color 
You please make it tangible to me. Give me God help me. If that's the only man, if the only thing you can say is Jesus, that will f- make the devil flee and his demonic and tormenting forces seven ways. I promise you. If the only thing you can say is Jesus, that's the what you have to do. Thank you, Dentist. I love you to life. Thank you for joining and supporting me, babe. I love you. So then the next thing is petition. So petition is another word for request, right? So when we go to God, do we automatically go in and hit him up and be like, God, no, he's not an ATM. You know, you got to, you know, bring bring that sweet incense. Okay, when you talk, okay, back in the days when you used to talk to your parents, did you just automatically go and ask them for something? No. And did you automatically assume that they wouldn't give it to you? No. You know, make it sweet. You know, you used to do your chores. You talk to them, right? You know, you're like, hey, how you doing? I'm behaving. I'm doing this. You know, but with God, come with that prayer of adoration, of confession, of, um, what is it, of, of thanksgiving, and then supplication. You make your request known. And sometimes we can't even do that. Like I told you, if you just, all you got to say is Jesus and help, that's all you got to do. You know, that's all you got to do because in your groans, the Holy Spirit, even in your groaning, your Holy Spirit will make intercession for you. And and sometimes you could just be like, oh, and you just wrote an entire book of everything that you went through. And God knows and understand that. And even if you don't even groan, those tears, those tears, God bottles them up and knows and understand. And it's going to water your flower garden of life with those tears that you're shedding in that moment that you're feeling anxious, that you're feeling uh, fearful, that you're feeling concerned. And so the last thing is thanksgiving. Okay, why do we want to be thankful for? That regardless, God, of what you do, if you do it for me or if you don't, I'm still loving you. I love you because you are God. You're faithful, right? But there's another deeper level here. And this is the second truth, the truth-telling Thursdays that I'm going to share with you. We talked about the root is fear. Now I'm going to give you the second truth. And this is in Thanksgiving section right here. So when we're Thanksgiving, when we're giving Thanksgiving to God, right, it's a prayer or an expression of gratitude. So not only are you expressing gratitude, but it's a prayer. So it's a, it's like a, it's a weapon of mass destruction. You're praying and you're giving Thanksgiving gratitude to God, right? But on top of that, I want y'all to think about this, right? And okay, Holy Spirit, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down on this one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so this is one thing I'm going to ask you. When is it that you tell somebody thank you? When is the appropriate time or wh- what? what is it that leads you? Okay, there you go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What is it that leads you to tell somebody thank you? What is it that leads you to tell somebody thank you? It's when they give you a gift, right? Or they do something for you. So it's an expression. Hey, Monique, sis, how you doing? It's an expression of gratitude. Thank you so much for um, for purchasing this for me. Thank you so much for being, a, for being a listening ear. Thank you so much for your prayers, right? So when we're giving God thanksgiving and we're praying at the same time, really, at the end of the day, the root of that thanksgiving is trust. Did you catch that? That that blew my mind. I know this might be elementary for some of y'all, but this really blew my mind. See, like appreciation for something, right? Something somebody did something to you. It's a formal way of of saying thank you, right? So that's it's an issue of it, it really at the end of the day is trusting him because has he done it yet for you? No. Has he done it yet for you? No. Are we saying that he's an ATM? No. But we're saying, God, hey, hey, Brian, how you doing? So what we're saying is, is that, God, I trust you if you do it and if you don't. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, I trust you if you do it or if you don't. Because at the end of the day, I know that you have my back. So and on this day... <laughs> That I had to share with you. It was my obligation. Did I want it to come up here? I surely did not. I was like, God, I, my eyebrows is looking rough. Um, it's been a rough day. Before I even got up here, there was some tension in the house. You know, distractions to stop me from doing that. I had an, a really, really challenging night last night with the storm and everything that was happening in my area. By all means, I sure was. 
do I feel like I needed to get up here? No, but I, I had to share this truth with you on this truth telling Thursday. Why? Not just because um, it's, it's a restoration from within part of your journey. No, because in this season, when the world is going crazy and being uh, pandemic, the word pan, pan means fear. That's the spirit of fear. It's a demonic force, right? It's a spirit of fear. So pandemic, it's, it's meant for you to cause fear. And if you were operating in the moment where we were focusing on the problem and not on, you know, and like giving it to God, that's what we're doing in the Thanksgiving portion. You know, that's what we're doing in the prayer. Father, I thank you that you're going to make a way out of no way. I don't know what you're going to do, but you're going to do it. What we're doing is we're actually, when we're trusting God, we're releasing that in the altar of our hearts and we're leaving it there. We're leaving it. We're trying to leave it there because one of the biggest challenges, and I'm talking to myself and I'm saying this with you, y'all, so please believe that I'm getting watered too and I have to chew on this word. That's why I've had, I had to settle it for the entire week. There's been truth being expressed and revealed to me throughout this week that once I leave it in the altar of my heart, I have to leave it there. So on this truth telling Thursday, two main things that hinder us from operating and applying this word in our lives one of the most challenging things is is when we operate in fear and when we lack trust in god and what he's going to do we're saying it with our mouths we're saying it with um with uh you know by what we what we're saying and what we're we're doing per se but we're not applying this word we're not applying it we're not applying it we're not of this world. We are not of this world. We are not of this world. We are kingdom citizens. God, God never said that life will be easy, but he said that it will be possible to do all the things that I have called you to do. You have to trust me. You have to trust the process. You have to trust the process. You have to declare this word over your mouth. And so that's what brings me to another thing. So we pray, we petition, and we give thanksgiving, right? And then when we're doing that, we're using the most powerful weapon in our bodies, and it's our mouths, our mouths. Because in that process, we're declaring God's word over our lives. That, and when we declare God's word over our lives, our words are powerful. Here's five things. I'm just going to, I'm not going to touch on all of them, but I want to touch on, on just one. And this is what my girls and I discovered um, today. When you declare the word of God, you're making it known. You're also explaining. You're making a formal statement from the governance of the kingdom of God of what you believe, right? And one of the things that we learned to, today was, is that the word creates and recreates. The word creates and recreates, right? And so what that means is that that Bible verse, and I'll, when I come back here and I'll share it with you, life, I think it's Proverbs, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, 1821, Proverbs 1821. Death and life are in the power of our tongues, right? Yes, death and life are in the power of our tongues. So that brings us to another point, the word of declaration. The word of God, right? When we speak the word of God, when we declare it over our lives, especially in moments where our flesh, our emotions, our eyes are in tune to what the, what's happening in front of us and not what God has promised us, with that, what we're doing is, but when we, what we're doing is we're attaching ourselves and we're feeding that fear and we're feeding um, and we're, um, once we feed into that fear, then the manifestation of that fear, thank you, Holy Spirit, is that we lack trust in what God is saying and his promises. You see that? So when we feed that, we sow that seed, we water it, right? And we plant that seed of fear, the manifestation, the fruit of it is lack of trust in God, right? So then this is another fact here that I want you to know. Because it, for all those three things to occur, for us to pray, for us to petition, for us to give thanksgiving, it requires an action. And the action starts with our mouth, right? And so that's where I'm coming from with the declaration of the word of God. So the word 
of God gives life and scares death. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? The word of God gives life and scares death. Man, I'm going to blow your mind even more. Do you know what my daughter said? The word of God gives life and kills death. Kills death. I said, girl, I almost fell on my chair. I'm, I'm telling you, today's word was so good. And I was just like, God, this is amazing. Out of the mouth of babes. You know what I'm saying? So much wisdom. She said, the word of life gives, the word of God gives life and kills death. And that's, um, you can see that in Proverbs 15 and 4 and 1 Peter 3, 10 and 12, right? So Proverbs 15 and 4 and 1 Peter 3, 10 and 12. So on this Truth Telling Thursday, on your journey for restoration from within, because it starts from within, right? It starts on renewing our minds, renewing our spirits, because that's what we're doing. And once we do that, we restore our bodies. So that's, and that goes back to, you know, what we said, when we apply God's word, when we speak, when we pray, when we petition, when we thank God, when we trust him, when we leave it in the altar of our hearts. And it's this, this might be a second by second thing that we need to do, you know? And because this word is being revealed to you, you're going to see how the enemy is going to, trust me when I tell you this, it creeps up in your life to bring anxiety. And then bring anxiety brings anger, brings being um, br headaches. You see how it manifests itself? And it just creeps up off of just one thing. Oh, oh man, I'm not on schedule today. Man, I woke up late today. <laughs> you see, and how that triggers to everything. And then it just tries to shift you and distract you. This is a distract distraction to keep you from the promises of God. Because on verse 7, it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, right? will guard your hearts and thoughts in Christ. So I dissected the word peace with the girls. And the word peace means calm, ordered condition. Freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. So, so we all know that the peace, this is what the peace of God brings. So he's saying, when you do these things, when you, um, when you apply the practical side of things with the supernatural side of things, I promise you, I promise you, daughter, that I'm going to give you peace that surpasses all understanding. And that when you apply these things, I'm going to guard your heart. I'm going to guard your mind. I'm going to guard your thoughts. That's a, dec that's a promise. So then now you can declare that. And the, dec the declaration that we have for Wisdom Wednesday was the peace of God guards my heart and mind. So am I just saying positive thoughts? No, this is the word of God. It's powerful. When the word came to earth, and that's in um, Matthew 12, 37. When the word came to earth, it became, you know, God became the word. That was Jesus Christ when he came. The Bible is a living organism. It has life. It cannot return void. So I'm encouraging you, sis. I'm encouraging you, brother. Today, let's continue to strengthen each other let's make this word applicable for our lives if you need to seek help and 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 seek a therapist by all means do that and seek god marry the great physician's hand with your with you know with your physician and seek wisdom we're not meant to live this life for ourselves so you are not alone yes this is a challenging time however we need to rely on God's supernatural source, on God's supernatural kingdom resources that he's given us. We're not of this world. We are not of this world. I'm not saying life is going to be easy, but it is possible. Everything is possible that God has called you to do with God. Everything is possible. Everything is possible in all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, and even the indifferent, indifferent, right? It's all going to work out for God because you are called. He's called you and you love him. And he's going, he's preparing you in this season. So sisters and brothers who are listening and live, God is calling us to not be anxious. And when we are anxious, he's telling us the immediate thing that we need to do is pray and petition and thank him. And that he will guard our hearts and our minds. 
So thank you, Father God, for this word that you've allowed us to come here and, and feast on today. And I thank you for those who are um, watching. Please bless them in a major way, Father God. They could have been anywhere else, but they heard the tone and the tune of the sound of your voice today. And I ask and pray that let this be a, a seed planted or watered so that they can get confirmation and continue to be salt and life on this earth. I ask and pray that you saturate the atmospheres that their feet touch, Father God, or where they're at right now in the name of Jesus. May your glory continue to be shined and, and outpoured to each and every person that they come in contact with today, Father God. I ask and pray that you make this word tangible, Father to them just as they um of those of you who are concerned and being worried and don't know about the um and, and don't know what's going to come i ask and pray that you show them the tangible the physical the practical side of things of what it is to breathe live a free life within you father god thank you father that you said that if we do these things that you will guard our hearts that you will guard our hearts. Thank you that, you know, that you are uh, giving us an opportunity to partner with you in this life, Father God. I ask and pray and apply the blood of Jesus over each and every one of these households, Father God. And I ask and pray that you continue to keep all of us, Father. Help us to trust you. Help us to quickly pray, Father God. Help us to quickly pray, Father. And I ask and pray that these words, Father, just like Samuel's words, never returned void and never fell to the ground. I ask that these words don't fall to the ground and they get the glory for you, Father. It is in your mighty name I ask and pray all these things. Amen. I love y'all to life. I love y'all. <laughs> and you have an amazing day on this Truth Telling Thursday.